We are not alone. You are watching Contact TV with your hosts, Leslie Mitchell Clark and Wes Roberts. Exploring ufology, metaphysics, and beyond with the world's foremost experts. We are not alone. And welcome everyone to another edition of Contact TV. My name is Leslie Mitchell Clark and I'm joined as always by... Wes Roberts, welcome. That's right. And whether it's the evening or three in the morning or seven in the morning or cocktail hour, we are here and we are joining you in your international location, wherever that may be. Now, as you know, we have prided ourselves on having many exciting, interesting, fascinating guests from the worlds of ufology and metaphysics and beyond. And today we are extremely excited. We have a guest that has come to us, Mr. Mike Patterson. And Mike has been involved for some years in perhaps the most unique and certainly the most um, evidential experiences with the beings that we call the Sasquatch. And I'm just going to read a little tiny bit about Mike from his own website, which is called Sasquatch Ontario, before we bring him on. And Mike says, Sasquatch Ontario is about a hidden truth, one that has shown up in my life in a big way. It's a truth that has the capacity to evolve human consciousness individually and on a collective scale. Sasquatch truth has the capacity to shape our world through the expansion of human consciousness in a mind, body, spirit alignment of truth. It has now been 12 years of searching for answers since my initial close Sasquatch vocal encounter on October 25th, 2008. It was the moment that changed my life and put me on the path that I'm on today. And eight of those years have involved personal contact experiences that continue to show up in my life, giving me incredible insight into their existence and how Sasquatch interact with humans. And without further ado, we would like to introduce our guest, Mike Patterson. Mike, thank you so much for joining us here on Contact TV yes. today so much and uh that little fascinating blurb there that from your website sasquatchontario.com sort of leads us in to the whole story of how you came to this work and how these contacts began happening to you either with or without solicitation i'm not even sure about that so mike over to you um first thanks for having me i appreciate that leslie and wes um this all started, uh, I, I believe it actually started when I was a, a child, at the age of 10, when we were up in, uh, oh, it was, uh, I can't remember the name of the area, but um, it was up north, and my parents were staying, and my family was staying at a chalet for the weekend, and, and back then you could drop your kids off and not get in trouble, so my dad had dropped me <laughs> off down the road to do some fishing, and there was a campground there, and uh, it started getting dusk, so I started walking back up the road, and at one point uh, there was a, a Sasquatch standing at the side of the road, and when I saw it, it, was, it might have been maybe 50 yards ahead, um, when I saw it, it just turned and disappeared, it was gone, not into thin air like, like I know they can do, um, but just uh, stepped off into the, the brush at the side of the road and was gone, and it traumatized me, and and uh, I ran back to where I was fishing. There's a campground there, and somebody, I remember walking up to a, a fire with a family sitting around there, and and I could I can still see the looks on their faces that you know this is uh, ten over forty years ago, right? And I can still see the looks on their faces um, that uh, you know they knew I just had a traumatizing experience. I was white as a ghost. I couldn't talk. I couldn't get words out. And finally, I said, help, and, and one of them, uh, the, I think the father of the family, drove me back to uh, where my family was. And I told everybody back then it was a bear, so, which is a common occurrence from my understanding. And, and then fast forward to 2008, um, I'd been in the woods 
photographing nature and wildlife just on my, my spare time, you know, spending a lot of time doing that. And apparently I was being watched. So one day I had an epiphany to start looking for Sasquatch. I don't know where that came from, but at this point I think they might have placed that thought there from you know, what I understand about their abilities. And uh, so 2008, I had my first close vocal encounter and, and that's uh, put me on this path I'm on today. Incredible. And um, your, your research has revealed that any of these preconceived notions that we have had about Sasquatch, and I, I would like to ask you if Sasquatch of North America is in fact related to the Yeti and the, the Swamp Man down the South, if this is all one type of species, or, or is the Sasquatch of North America unique? Um, from my understanding, they are a people. And in fact, they are a human type, not, they're not fully human, they're not homo sapien, they're, but they are human and something else, as they've relayed to me through written communication, because that's what this situation has been developed to, where I'm, I'm using a chalkboard and a sketch pad and getting drawings and, and asking questions and getting answers from them. Um, so they are a people, and uh, I assume as diverse as we are as a mm -hmm. people, so mm -hmm. Uh, from my understanding, they're all connected. Everything's connected, from my understanding, that we're connected to them. Yeah. Uh, we're connected to everything and, uh, as they are. So. Are they indigenous to this planet, Mike? Are, or are they the highest form of evolution that maybe occurred out of the Miocene apes? Or are they, are they something else? Were they placed here somehow? I've, I've been asking um, recently, l last couple visits, about uh, um, who created you, who created us, and I haven't gotten a response to that yet, but I did ask them at one point, uh, where, do you, where do you come from, where do your people come from? And they wrote, home here always. But then they wrote, S-L-U-R-K, slurk, whatever that means, I don't know what that stands for, but that was the response they gave at the time. Interesting. So I have no idea what that is. Mm -hmm. Are they nocturnal? Uh, the activity tends to be more so mm -hmm. at night, but uh, no, any time of day, anywhere, um, their ability to show their presence, which I've learned, it comes in numerous forms, um, oh. both mm -hmm. indoors and out, uh -huh. which, uh, like the place I'm living at now, I'm in the woods, and uh, the second day that I moved in there, I was unpacking. I have this, uh, this nice mask my parents brought me back from one of their trips. Uh, it was up the Amazon and this beautiful mask and, and one of the, the beads under the eye had fallen out. So I took it and I placed it on a shelf in the living room and, um, and it rolled off to the side and went down a little crack there between the shelf and the wall. And so I was like, okay, I just left it, you know, I'm unpacking my stuff. And, and um, then uh, it was the next day when I grabbed a butter knife uh, to go pop that bead out. So I went and I looked and it, and it wasn't there. And I thought, well, that's weird. Where the hell is it? You know, there's nobody else there. And there's another shelf just above it. And suddenly it started bouncing on the shelf above it. So I was like, hey, we're here. You know, this is something that has happened a lot in my life. With I've, I've been witness to a port's uh, um, so many times. Um, at this point, they, um, there's been a lot of marbles used to show their presence. They, they come out of thin air, you know, they'll, they'll hit me or not hard, just, you know, uh, both indoors and out. But they finally showed it, ha um, they showed it to me happening in slow motion and they did it right in front of my face. So, you know, basically a couple feet in front of my face, I had turned my head, I was visiting the cottage at the time. And, and I suddenly see this marble being pushed through empty space. Um, and then it dropped to the floor. I was running audio outside. We had the window open, so I captured my, uh, my reaction to it when it happened. And then they did it again uh, on the next visit when I was putting my, my uh, shoes on to step outside. Oh, That's extraordinary. Yeah, so they've, they've held this and allowed me to see this pushed through empty. It looked like a wormhole, uh -huh. like you would see... Uh, I would expect that it would be pushing outwards, but no, it, it was inwards. Interesting. You know, it's long been, because, because the Sasquatch has been so elusive, well, who would, 
who would blame them for being elusive with what goes on and yeah. people trying to mess with them. But um, is it um, is it possible for them? It's long been speculated that they can, you know, up, uh, you know, step up their vibration or whatever it is and and achieve invisibility or go from one place to another. Um, have you have you seen this happen? Is are they able to move about spiritually in a sense or? Um, yeah, well, as, as you see, I've just dove right into the, the crazy aspect of all this. Um, I've been witness to probably upwards of a thousand encounter incidents uh, over the past eight years with Neff's family. Mm -hmm. And uh, at this point, there's as much stuff happening indoors as out. Wow. So I'm using a chalkboard and a sketch pad. I leave them on the table. I, I put a camera on the table. They've actually imposed dozens of images at this point. Um, and some of them, you know, we're not present. It's happening in the cottage when we're outside. But there's some that have happened where uh, I'm sitting there checking the camera every little bit, and it's right in front of me. I haven't left, and suddenly there's new images appearing. But I've had physical contact many times, too. You know, I get pokes, and I've been patting the head, even my, my, my face covered at one point. Um, so as far as uh, moving about uh, with the indoor outdoor thing that uh -huh. to me that shows their interdimensional yes yeah, aspect yeah, and as yeah. far as the invisibility i think uh they are invisible i believe for for the most part mm -hmm. oh. and they they uh, you can feel the physical aspect of them when they touch you so it shows me how they can leave a single footprint um in the in the snow like they do because we've been witness to hundreds from nest family uh, multiple family members and when they do this, I, I, I could understand how they could leave a print without actually being seen in the physical, in in this in this realm. Mm -hmm. um, so I had an incident at home too, not too long ago, with uh, my girlfriend Jen there, and uh, my landlord had uh, contacted me through text. He's he's upstairs, and he said, "Hey, I heard a couple of wood knocks in the last half hour." I, he knows what I'm involved in. He's he's very good with it and pays attention. So I told Jen, I said, uh, you know, I got to go out back. There's woods behind the house and, and just to, you know, show my respect, right? So we went out about 1 o'clock in the morning, and this was before the snow uh, this, this winter. And uh, suddenly I, I hear uh, some wood knocks. Uh, I don't know if they're telepathic or they, they sounded distant. She didn't hear it. There was a bit of wind going on. Um, and suddenly, uh, it was about a minute later, we're standing there, and we both uh, saw, heard three footsteps, a brief pause, and then two, two more. It was about six feet in front of us, and we both were witness to the leaves kicking up. And then she got to witness uh, the form, I believe it was a, a young, we, we both felt it was a male, mm -hmm. a young male. So she saw his form through a shimmering. So I, I think they can oh. adjust their right, vibration right, right. to be... Uh, completely invisible, partially visible. They can show, uh, we have a shot with uh, an arm reaching over a snowmobile, which I found a marble in between two snowmobiles at one point. And I think they uh, just showed just the arm. I, I think they can show their, their body in part or in whole. And it's uh, just uh, inherent quality. And I'm also aware that the, the infants already know how to do this. Oh, and some kind of endemic, I mean, not an innate sort of thing that they come in with. Wes, did you have a question? Yeah, you mentioned how you first saw one of these beings. Um, these days or over the past few years, do you sense them? I'm interested in perception and sense, and um, that's just call it feeling, intuition. Do you sense them as well as physically encounter them? Um, I have at times, but it, it varies. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know why that is. Uh, like I, I've had moments where suddenly my skin's all tingling. Mm -hmm. I remember I went to a spot not far from where I, uh, where I live. And I went into this uh, forested area one night and I, I took an audio recorder and I placed it down beside me and it was a nice still night. I sat down on the ground beside it and um, and suddenly I felt uh, this tingling on my body, but it was only on my left side, which I found rather odd. And, and I stated out loud that I could, I could feel them. And I, when I went home and I played the audio back, there's a whisper. 
and also physical contact on the mic, which is something that they do often um, to show their presence. It's like, okay, there was nothing hitting that microphone. You know, I'm very aware of what I'm doing when I'm recording uh, with the audios. So sometimes I can feel them and other times there's been incidents, all, all kinds of times actually there's been incidents when I don't know they're there. Um, Dwayne and I have stood outside, and he's the cottage owner, um, many times and Neff's right there with us. He's standing right beside us and you know sometimes he'll give me a poke or um, there was a one funny incident where Dwayne was wearing a baseball cap and, and uh, Neff, I believe it was Neff, had, had uh, given me physical contact. I said, oh, Neff's here. He said, how do you know? Are you sure? I said, of course. How long have we been doing this? And he said, you sure? And suddenly his hat just flipped <laughs> off, went flying up in the air. and oh, said, man. you believe me now? <laughs> uh, yeah, so oh, th there's a lot, of, a lot of humor involved with their activity. Like, they're very <gasps> lighthearted people. Uh, so you have been really engaging with what you would call a, f a family group yes. of some. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've learned about their family structure? Or is there a paternal, are they a maternal, uh, a matriarchy or a patriarchy or neither? Or You know, it's at this point, I don't even know how many family members there are. It's, it's, uh, I, I did learn recently that um, I asked the age of Neff in human years and, and his sister. And it's funny, at first they wrote in the chalkboard, they, at first they wrote 48 for Neff, and then they rubbed it out and they put 25. So their time timeline obviously differs from ours. So they're, you know, they're calculating, I asked them in human years too. Yeah. Um, so they wrote 25 for Neff and uh, his sister's name is Anastasia. They wrote 12 for her. So when, when this first started, mm -hmm. He was 17 years old, so, uh, 17 years old, so some of the, the vocalizations you hear um, from way back that I started posting back in 2013, that's, uh, he's a 17-year-old Sasquatch maturing man, and his, his little sister at the time was four. And she's given her voice too, uh, just not done really any talking, um, just, you know, little, little vocals here and there. She likes to... Uh, um, uh, be outside the door and it, it's funny because you know it, she'll pretend to be a door squeak but it, her voice is very clear you can tell it's her and the door hasn't even been opened yet so, <laughs> so she, she does this we're walking towards the door sound. yeah you, you can hear the footsteps uh, from us coming towards the door and she's already made this sound and the door hasn't even been pushed open yet, so. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny are these the same voices they use with one another or are they for your sake um I don't know. I, I would assume they, you know, they converse with each other. I believe that, uh, or not, I believe, I, they are highly telepathic. So mm -hmm. I, right. I would assume that, you know, some of their, or much of their conversations are, are utilized with uh, telepathy. But, um, you know, they've also been recorded talking to each other and heard talking to each other. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There have been some recordings of that. And before we talk about these 
incredible casts here that you've brought for us to uh, to look at. I, I mentioned uh, in an earlier interview that you probably know what I do. I'm a hypnotherapist, and I work a lot with people in, in the hypnotic regression. And uh, a number of people who have had, uh, have had experiences where they have visually seen a, a Sasquatch being either being beamed up into a craft or being beamed down. And I guess my question would be, do these, do these beings have a, the way they are communi communicating with you, do they have open communication with, with other beings who uh, might be extraterrestrial? I'm, I'm completely convinced of that through mm -hmm. my own personal experiences. Um, as I was relaying to, to Dave earlier after uh, his interview there, um, I'd had two UFO experiences uh, 15 days apart. One, uh, both placed basically in front of me. I, I could tell they were given purposely. Mm -hmm. And um, the one happened up in Neff's area. And there's been an incident that happened at the cottage one night where uh, a being was looking through the window. I didn't witness this, but Duane did take a photo. Mm -hmm and uh, there was somebody else visiting at the time and he had stepped out I think to get some wood or something um, outside the house and there was a tap on the window and this person got to witness this face looking in the window and, and they, they told him when he, uh, when he came back inside and he's like, yeah, okay, right. And then it happened again and Dwayne just, uh, you know, I don't think he took his, his uh, gaze off the window and he grabbed his camera and managed to to grab a shot, and uh, the, the one thing that stuck out the most was the, the huge black eyes, mm -hmm. like massive black mm -hmm. eyes. Oh, mm -hmm. of a being that was checking in. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. that makes so, sense. And, and also, their consciousness, they're extreme, they're highly telepathic. Their, their mind speak ability is absolutely astounding, which I've experienced uh, numerous times at this point. So, um, when the first time that happened, I was. Uh, I was in that theta stage, uh, laying on the couch at home. This is kind of around the beginning of when this all started happening, and, and they grunted in my head so loud. I, I shot to my feet so fast, and I was on the phones like, you wouldn't believe what happened, you know, to, to Dwayne, right? And, and um, there's, been, uh, there's been other incidents that have happened since. So, yeah, there, I believe because of that ability that... Um, there are no secrets among their people, and there is a connection to um, other beings. Yeah, indeed. Star, indeed. star people, star nations. Oh, right. right. And that's Could why I, I asked about sentience. Sorry. Sentience. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, that's why I asked about sentience and how they communicate. If you felt them or sense them, that's kind of so what I meant. So all of that's true. Yeah. They yeah. can be felt and experienced, and and they are quasi. They can be quasi physical or fully physical, or or in fact non-physical. They have a choice, like a step up, step down, transformer. They've everything and everything in between, and yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's quite uh, wow. extraordinary. Wow. Wow. You. You, my friend. You. I miss you, my friend. Red. In the who? Who? Who?
Can I tell you about my little of experience? I, and uh, I've, I've never shared this, but uh, it happened um, in the Black Hills of South Dakota, where I was working in a summer theater as an actor, as an apprentice actor. And um, it was the middle of the night, and I, I was heading up to the bathhouse. This was pretty primitive conditions. So there was a separate bathhouse with one like lonely light bulb, you know, hanging outside. You had to go up a little hill. And as I headed towards the bathhouse, I saw some movement over to the right-hand side of the bathhouse. And as my eyes began to adjust, I thought it was a small bear cub. But then I saw a larger, darker figure behind the bear cub, my impression. And, this, and the little figure was jumping up and down, just like with glee or joy. Now here's the weird part, and then I heard a voice in my head that was as clear as a bell, and it said, I have to, I have to give my baby a walk. Like, I just, I have to give my baby a walk, please don't bother. It was, that was the rest of it. And then I, I don't know why, I sent a message back and I just said, go in peace and love. And, you know, and the whole thing, the whole exchange, I thought I was overtired. I thought I was hallucinating. I'd been up for many hours. I really did. But now, after hearing about your experiences, I now think that that's exactly what happened. I saw a small, young Sasquatch baby, if you will, and its mother. And the baby wanted to physically probably go out and look at the hairless humans running around in the middle of the night. I don't know. But uh, that really happened, I think, now. I think I really heard that, that voice inside my head, as if someone had just spoken right into my ear. Yeah. So that yeah. was my, that was my, I, I went over the next day and what I saw at the side of the bathhouse, I saw a big pile of leaves that had been jumped on. So like all kids, the baby was jumping in the leaves. And that's my, that's my little experience. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's amazing. It, and it sounds exactly like something they would do. And, mm -hmm. and they do have that ability, uh, you know, to speak in our minds, just as you described. Yeah. Maybe, if, if, maybe they have a way of figuring if you're open to it. I don't know. Or receptive. I'm not sure. Because, you know, you don't hear about this a whole lot about this aspect that you're discussing, this spirituality, this telepathy, this advanced thinking. This is something that you're bringing into this equation. They have another ability, and it's, um, you know, it, when you describe this, um, you know, our, our current status quo would say, oh, that's just a dream. But they have the ability to make contact in that state, in that oh. dream state. And I've met several of Neff's family this way. Um, there's been incidents that have happened, and I, they even brought one of their children to me, which at this point I now believe it was uh, Anastasia, because uh, it was a little child about um, yay high way back. This was in 2013. And I was laying on the couch uh, on my side. Again, I was in that theta state, and um, Suddenly, I, I could sense a, an older female in my peripheral, mm -hmm. and and next thing I know, there's a, a young child, and I ended up holding her hand, and I, I was conscious enough in that state to give my hand a little little shake to get a re purposely get a reaction from her. Mm -hmm. So I was conscious enough to to make that decision in that state. And when I did that, there was an explosion of her energy that just ran up through my arm, through my body. I could feel all her emotions as they were my own. She was so freaked out, but so happy and excited at the same time. And um, she didn't pull away, and it lasted a little longer, and, and then it was over, and I woke up, you know, and just completely mind blown. So that was, it really showed me who they were as a people. When I, I like, I could literally feel her emotions as my own. So. Oh my goodness. Do you think, before we talk about the wonderful cast you took here, do you think that there is some um, 
there would be some way that on our planet we could we could live in in harmony with these beings like they could have their own areas their own preserve what would make them what would make them happy i know they've got to be fearful and upset by all of these amateur crypto hunters out there with all their abusive stuff that they're doing and they're yelling and they're this and that what could we do or have they told you what they need from us they haven't really conveyed anything that way to me um humans obviously we need to wake up right you know I, I think they're revealing their existence they did give me an experience once um with an image i had just woken up so i was fresh awake and my mind was um, very fresh and they, they gave me an image of dozens of them walking across an open meadow all in the same direction and, and it was followed by the words soon your people will know and I, it was there's such clarity with it um they were basically telling me that soon your people will know us. And um, so I, I've actually been able to watch this unfold since then as this subject has grown and expanded, um, you know, since I, I first uh, started. I believe they are exposing their existence because of the damage we're doing to the earth, right? Oh, yeah. This is, this is my understanding. Yeah. Not that they yeah. told me that, but it's just a yeah. very strong feeling. It has to be. This is, this is the message coming from advanced beings, coming from Sasquatch, coming from maybe our progenitors, other contacts people are having with esoteric beings of all sorts. This is the message. This is the message. Yeah, we're and poisoning everything, right? We are, but we're also waking up. Yeah. We've got that Greta Thunberg, and we've got all kinds of things, all kinds of awareness going on. Now, Mike, tell us a little bit about, you brought us some artifacts, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. And there are three footprints here. And I understand that these were made, or at least these two were made in the snow. Oh, actually, they're all, all, they're all in the cast snow. in the that snow. That takes yeah. a lot of, another aspect, that takes a lot of pressure, doesn't it? To like, I mean, the weight of these beings has to be kind of obvious by the depth of the cast, right? A actually, um, not in the situation we're in, because what's happening, we're not in, we're surrounded by woods, but we're not in the woods when, when this is happening. It's, it's basically a single lane gravel road outside the cottage, and this is where they're leaving trackways and um, we've documented hundreds of footprints from them and 100% of them go nowhere. They start out of thin air and they stop. Uh, sometimes, much of the time, they're single prints and there's been trackways left. Um, so the road is plowed pretty much. You know, there, there might be a layer of snow on there. You know, it's frozen gravel, gravel underneath so you're only gonna put uh, you know, your foot down so much, uh, even if you're 2,000 pounds, right, a, a vehicle or whatever. So they tend to place it, um, strategically place their prints where we will find them and also in a, in a spot they'll pick a nice fresh patch of clean snow, which they tend to do, which is quite awesome. I, I just love that, how they do that. And so, yeah, it's not necessarily, I get a lot of comments that, oh, that should be deeper uh, in the snow. And, and that's when I explain, oh, well, yeah. maybe there's only an inch of snow down, right? Yeah. Or whatever. So yeah. it varies. So it does yeah. vary. Now, this this print here is is from uh, Neff, yeah, that's one Neff of the Tears. beings you're communicating with. And you, you say this is from when he was a, a teenager or yeah, younger. Yeah, so... Um, could you hold it up so we can take a, the yep. camera can get a good look at that? Yeah. For, so look at that. this was a cast on April 13, uh, April 13th, 2013. Mm -hmm. And I had sent a cast copy to John Bindernagel, who's, who's, you know, he's now passed, right? He was involved in this subject for uh, uh, about four decades. And he had told me the, the bulbous toe and the width on the foot are indications of, you know, it being Sasquatch. I already yeah. knew it was, yeah. but um, that, uh, so Neff's, yeah, Neff was 17 years old when he gave that. And the vocals that you're gonna hear- um, In the show. Uh, in the yeah. show, yeah. They come from him. Right. And, 
and he's basically 17, 18, 19, depends on what vocals you're hearing, right? Um, because I've been documenting his family activity for close to eight, roughly eight years now, right? So that was 2013. And then this was just, uh, I have another one, I didn't bring it, um, where it's actually two inches bigger than that one. Mm -hmm. uh, that was cast in 2018. And that's 12 inches in length there. So his foot now is uh, 16 inches. So this was cast this year. So that's, <laughs> that's the difference. That's the same individual. Um, this is only about uh, a month or, you know, six weeks old. I can't remember the exact date. I have to look it up. So that's the same individual. And uh, it's funny because I asked about uh, the, you know, I, I think out loud. Uh, I ask questions and, and say things and they tend to happen um, with the activity there. So I, I wondered about the growth in his foot and he gave that on purpose. So you could see. Yeah. yeah. And I also asked about... Uh, wondered about the, the size of him in comparison to us, which I, I didn't bring any drawings or anything, but they did give a drawing. And it's funny, they, uh, Dwayne's a little taller than me, so they, they gave a drawing with me on one side, Dwayne on the other, Neff in the middle, is his hands on both our heads, and uh, Dwayne's slightly taller in the picture, just like in real life, and, and Neff in comparison is just, you know, yeah. I, I figure he's probably gotta be close to eight feet tall at this point. Yeah. And it's funny because they even give little initials, an M for Mike and a D for Dwayne. Oh, is it? N for Neff. It's like, yeah, you really got to put the N for Neff there, didn't you? And, so, and they drew a heart beside it. So they're, they're very, very loving, compassionate. They've been, um, you know, some people w would hear some of the vocals he's done and they'd be scared, you know, very afraid. When actually it's just his boisterous antics. He's having a good time. He's... Yeah, they're very lighthearted, and, and we called him Mr. Funny before he gave his name, before we finally got his name, so. Isn't that something? Do they, well, this is a kind of off-the-wall question, but being a musician, Mike, do, do, they, do they respond to music? Have you ever played any different types of music for mm -hmm. Neff and his family? Um, it's funny, recently I, I, I have this nice uh, bass flute that I, that I bought, and, and you know, I'm not very good at it, but uh, I took it up there and I played it, and I got no, I got no response. It's like, okay. <laughs> you I got no I, respect. Yeah, I guess I, I suck no at that, but um, <laughs> uh, we've left them gifts. Like uh, one of the first things I ever left was a call a jam block, a per percussion piece. Um, I think I paid forty bucks for that thing, and it disappeared like that. Jeez. And then um, left them, uh, you know, cheap dollar store flute and. Uh, Sometimes you'll, you'll hear, uh, somebody, uh, a friend of mine gave me a rattle, a little native made rattle that I left on location at this other place I go to to pitch my tent. It's in the same region and I have my audio recorder there and I hear it get picked up in a little, little rattle there and hmm. it disappeared, right? So yeah. probably took it for one of the children. Um, so they, they do mess with the instruments. Yeah. Um, I haven't really gotten a response playing anything for them. But. Okay, I'm well, just, just uh, wondering, I mean, I, there was a, a, a Lakota woman, a Native American woman, uh, told me that uh, her tribe, and of course I think this probably goes all over to most indigenous peoples, that they accept the Sasquatch, they call them special people. Their special people is the translation of their word for them. And she told me that uh, her tribe, which was in, um, uh, uh, again, the Black Hills of South Dakota. They, whenever they caught uh, salmon or big fish, they had a certain place uh, next to the river where they would leave the gift. They would leave. Uh, they, it was always half of whatever they caught. They would leave for the Sasquatch, and that the beings um, would return that generosity with little crafts. Like she said, they made what looked like little masks or little faces with reeds. Did I have some of those. No way. Oh yeah, they've they've done the same with us, given us gifts and. Really. Um, yeah, and you can tell they're made from different individuals. Some, some young and not really learned yet, and and uh, older ones that are very intricate pieces and. 
Um, uh, Dwayne's been given a couple that have marbles woven inside. Oh them. my God, the marbles! The, marble the marbles thing. are big with yeah. the yes. with the Sasquatch. Oh, between us, we yeah. probably ended up with. Uh, this was a while back now, so probably more, uh, at least fifteen hundred. So. Marbles. Oh, every visit, I keep joking with them. Like, you guys run out yet? And, you know, you run out of marbles. Last visit, I come home with, I think, five. So. <laughs> And, and, and what happens, um, like I've been standing there in the room, mm -hmm. I have a glass in my hand, and I hear tink, oh, got a marble. You know, they, they come out of thin air, and mm -hmm. I've had one dropped right into my hands while I'm sitting in a chair, and it's... Uh, it's classic A-porting. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They've got mm -hmm. it down. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Um, why, do, why do you think that, and this is kind of an odd question, I suppose, but why do you think that that you have been sort of selected as the the only person that I know of, that Wes knows of, who is having these beautiful experiences. I was going to ask that too. It, it's funny when you said why. I already knew what you were going to say as soon as you as soon as you started saying it. I already uh -oh. knew your question. <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, they um, perhaps it's my uh, I have the the backbone, the fortitude, the um, I'm able to push through the fear. My heart is pure. My, I have integrity. Um, you know, I haven't always uh, made the right choices in life, but at, you know, at this Who point, has, you know? yeah, at, at this point, I'm, I'm trying to do the right thing, and you know, that's for the greater good. And, and I think they see that, so they yeah. they keep showing up, right? So they I'm know who you obviously are. doing something right. Well, maybe in a, you know, maybe in your past lives as a humanoid, maybe you've been close with them oh, in they, other they, lifetimes. Yeah, they, they gave me some information on that, but I'm not going to say Oh, that okay. <laughs> All right. We'll save that for next yeah. time. <laughs> well, I, I would like to follow up on that question. We have a friend who's a guest sometimes on the show. We call him an ambassador. Would you consider yourself an ambassador? You know, I, I don't like to label myself with... Uh, um, I'm just like anybody else, just given an ex extraordinary experience um, that I feel needs to be shared mm -hmm. because this helps the collective. And um, so I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm just like anybody else. I, Part of the why me question, though, isn't it? You're it, bringing this to the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, when it, when it happened, I, I have a big mouth. I can't shut up about it, right? <laughs> I just want to tell the world, yeah. so... Yeah, well, you know, you're supposed to. Yeah, it's, it's too, too much to hold in. Yeah. And there's so many people that contact me and tell me their experiences that they don't tell to anybody. Yeah. And, and I can tell they're, they're so happy to finally be able to get it out and talk to somebody who understands and is, is a knower, right? So. Indeed. Yeah. Now, do you think that when, they, um, when, when the Sasquatch are, are physical um, and they're going through their experiences, do they... Do they have like? Do they live, rest in caves, or do they have campgrounds, or uh, are they just always on the move? They seem to be constantly moving around, but they, that may not even be true. It seems they don't need much sleep. I'll tell you that. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. Um, as far as where they reside, um, I have my ideas, but I tend to keep things. Um, about that close to me okay. because, you know, I, I'm sure there's people in positions of authority that are searching for them. In fact, uh, they do, there are people that want to kill them off. They, they've, they've relayed this to me because I asked them about certain things. And um, one of the questions was, um, actually, Dwayne asked, are they trying to kill us all? And, and they had written, same as us, basically them, same as them, right? Mm -hmm. There's people that, uh, yeah, they do not want them here. They want them gone because they are a threat to the status quo. They, they break the system. They're, oh, they they're do. truth. Oh, yeah. This oh, is yeah. why, and this is why I do this. Yeah. That's why I do this because it breaks this status quo. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, that's what we're all about. Oh, yes. You yeah, know? Many years. <laughs> now, this has been, I'm, I'm not sure how much time we have. I, I think we're. Oh, we've got a few minutes. We've to go. got a few minutes yeah, to easily. go. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, so what do you see in that vision that they gave you in your dream is beautiful, by the yes. way. The, I, I can almost go in your head and see it. You know, all of them just strolling across a beautiful grassy land, 
not un unafraid, uh, being able to live their lives in peace, in harmony with the earth. Um, I can see that and it feels like it's, it is a timeline that could very well be activated, that they could absolutely be moving into that place where they're acknowledged and become protected. I mean, there are already, at least in Canada, there are provinces that, that make any kind of hunting or killing of Sasquatch or a, a crime. That's, that's would be something that would have to, their, their legal protection, I think, would need to happen. The biggest thing for me that I would love to see in all this is clear cutting stopped. Just shut it down. Mm -hmm. it, enough already, you know, leave the old growth forests and, mm -hmm. you know, select cutting, I, I understand that, um, even though I don't like that either, but. Um, as far as the clear cutting goes, uh, yeah, it's it's got to stop. It's it's just decimating the earth. Right? Mm -hmm. so. Our ability to produce oxygen and sustain all of the different life yeah, forms. The, the trees clean the air. They give give us oxygen. Uh, shade shade the earth. Keep things cool. Uh, you know, give it uh, homes to so many critters and. So it's, yeah, and especially the Sasquatch, you know, it's their home. And I'm quite confident the logging companies are well aware of their existence. Oh, they'd have to be. Yeah. They'd have to be, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if they were in, in, in what, in, you know. Cahoots? If they, no, if they were <laughs> making entrances into, if. Oh, uh, incurrences, yeah. Incurrences, uh, that, uh, that the Sasquatch would be up to their, they could be, do their trickery and they could be making things pretty difficult if mm -hmm. people were in certain areas. Not to hurt anyone, but they could do all kinds of stuff, I imagine, to stop something they wanted to stop. But do you think they have a non-interference policy? Um, I. I would think that uh, some of their people do not like us very, you know, because they see what we do, the yeah. damage we do, um, how we treat each other and, and the earth. Um, Neff's family, uh, they're very compassionate, very loving. Um, I had an experience once, his voice come out of uh, thin air, basically. Um, very um, uh, adamant about the word love, and it, it just, Kind of blew my mind the, the way it happened and so they're, they're very evolved that way understanding love is the most powerful force and mm -hmm. and they wish us to get you know to be the same to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. understand that and they're very you know they're, they're the epitome of don't judge a book by its cover they really are their their consciousness is very advanced mm, indeed um, ironically, I was thinking about that very, very uh, noted piece of footage, the Patterson footage, yeah, the right? Patterson uh, footage. <laughs> oddly, um, do you believe that that is that is in fact a Sasquatch or a female Sasquatch, or do you believe it was it was faked? Or what's your feeling on the classic oh, I, Patterson? Oh, that's a hundred percent real. It's yeah. you know that's 1967. Yeah. You, know, you look at that. They, Hollywood couldn't come close to that. No. Um, I actually did an interview not too long ago. On, uh, it was a, a native radio station in Yakima, Washington, and Bob Gimlin was on that. Uh, oh, really? Interview. So that okay. was yeah. That was really. I'm trying to get a copy of that, but uh, I was told afterwards that he he was he was just elated with that discussion because I'm I'm full on yeah. paranormal yeah. talk, right? Because I yeah. don't hold back, and, right? Um, and I guess he is well aware of that, so. Um, as, as far as their abilities and, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, why didn't she just disappear? You know, maybe they don't want us to see that happen. I don't know. Um, I did ask them the question once, can all your people go invisible? And they told, they wrote yes. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just a, it's just a tweak on the radio dial for them. Yeah. It's just a frequency tweak. Yeah. Maybe, you know? maybe she was, uh, pulling their attention away from, um, her family possibly, you know. It's because she was female. It definitely seemed as if she was look, looking behind to see if they were following her. I, I tend to go with that. Yeah, maybe there was scenario. children involved in the I in think the there were, yeah. I think there were. I think, and, and if the, and if the, the interact, my little interaction of that voice full of love that I heard in my head, I just want to take care of my baby. I'm not going to bother you. If that's any example of their uh, maternal, loving way, 
it was pretty incredible. Yeah, they're very family oriented for yeah. sure. Yeah. I don't want to go down any negative paths because this is what you do. This is your work. Um, but have you met resistance, human resistance? All kinds of it. Can, can you talk about that uh, a little bit? Or? Yeah, um, I won't give any specifics sure. as far as names go because I don't want to give them any attention, but this situation has been plagued with harassment, trespassing, stalking, slander. It's just been ongoing for years. They're trying to, you know, make me go away, paint me as a hoaxer, and, and I just, I, you know, bring on your army and it still won't be enough. I'm not going away, so. Yeah. They try and they try and uh, even flying this Cessna, as I mentioned to you before, over the cottage and, I, and we were given a drawing showing that uh, they were using technology that was coming out of that plane. And that was, the plane was so low that I, I think it might have... Uh, um, uh, violated uh, policy? Violated, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have the, the audio recording. Mm -hmm. uh, you can hear the engine so loud, it's like, whoa, it's right there and uh, yeah, so... I'm thankful that Neff's family has this interdimensional quality about them that allows them to hide from from those of us who, you know, have nefarious intentions towards them. Mm, good. But you're still bringing the word out. You have um, changed your YouTube channel, right? Did, did you want to talk about um, that at all? Yeah, yeah, I recently changed it to a paid subscription, okay, although good. I, I, I've left a bunch of videos up there still for public. Yeah. Um, I was asked by the cottage owner to not put any new content out publicly because mm -hmm. it's just bringing too much attention oh, I see. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, and it brings yeah. trespassing. That, makes sense. that more, makes sense. Even though, hey, yeah. they can still pay and go behind the wall, but, um, you know, we, we do our best to keep an eye open for anybody that, you know, comes around the cottage and that uh, yeah. uh, we tend to do most of our visits in the winter time when there's snow on the ground you know, humans can't hide their prints like right. like the sasquatch can right so. they can't you're a little more protected if the if you're having these encounters primarily in the winter yeah there's there's yeah. less people up there too there yeah. there are you know a lot of cottages in the region right mm -hmm. this whole adage of um, assumption of uh, remote mountainous regions or, or places where there's no people that you have to go to to find activity that's just it's it's hogwash it's uh, they can be anywhere they want to be they can be as as Dave mentioned uh, earlier they can be right here right now and we wouldn't know it unless they wanted us to so well I'm going to ask you when you have a chance to please thank them thank Neff and his family for you know endorsing you to come and, and talk about them as loving, evolved beings. And we all hope for a better world where they can live in harmony and peace and we can live in harmony and peace with them. You know, that Definitely. would be a dream to I, be I, able I to. I let them know all the time. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Good, good. All right. And we know people know how to get in touch with yes, you, Yes, we Mike. need to know that. What's the best way to get in touch with you? Um, I, I have my website, SasquatchOntario.com. Mm -hmm. I, I don't update it very often, but mm -hmm. there's a, a contact um, and you'll be able to form on there. You can send me an email. Um, or Sasquatch Ontario at yahoo.ca okay. is, Wonderful. is the email address. And then there's my YouTube channel as well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I probably have about six, seven dozen videos all together on there. Wow. wow. I'm still, you know, making new content. I have some new content to post uh, with uh, this past winter's activities, too. And well, we're Wonderful. very thankful to have you here, and we're thankful for our viewers, too, right? Yes, You're say we're thankful for our viewers, and I'm going to deliver this right to you. Please like and subscribe to our channel, Contact TV. Our we would Contact appreciate TV. our Contact TV. Mm -hmm. And Mike, thank you again. It's been such an honor welcoming you here to the show and, and your message. And uh, we're thrilled to be able to maybe reach a few people and uh, get their brains opened up. I, I appreciate you having me on. Thank you for Absolutely. sharing. Thank, thank you very much. All right, thank you, Mike. Thanks. And remember, we, we are, are not, not alone. alone. We are not alone. You are watching Contact TV with your hosts, Leslie Mitchell Clark and Wes Roberts, exploring ufology, metaphysics, and beyond with the world's foremost experts.